Karage Week. How's it going, fellow foodies? My name is Chef PK here in Chef Paul Makes, and today we're making karage with with a twist. After watching Soma and crew make that karage wrap, I really wanted to make my own style of that. I really always crave chicken and waffles whenever I go somewhere, but unfortunately I couldn't find a waffle iron, so we're gonna do the next best thing. Chicken and pancakes. It'll probably work. Grab a snack, grab your notebooks, let's make this thing. First thing we're gonna need to do is start heating up our oil. I'm gonna use half peanut and half canola oil. The reason why I like using some peanut oil is because it has this higher smoke point. So once it gets hot, it won't smoke and degrade as fast as using pure vegetable or canola oil. I also just purchased this digital thermometer about 15 minutes ago. So make sure you have one on hand to get this temperature to 350. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is actually marinate our chicken thighs. Remember chicken thighs do have a higher fat content so they will give you a better overall taste than just chicken breast. If you prefer chicken breast, no worries, go with that. It's just gonna be not as nice and savory as the chicken thigh. Since we're doing karage, we're gonna go ahead and dice this up into bite-sized portions. Take your chicken and place it in the bowl you're also gonna have your marinade in. Remember to sanitize your cutting board or use a different one like I did when you're doing chicken. You don't want any raw chicken near your fresh ingredients. Didn't forget the headband. The next part is the marinade. Now I want you guys to take creative freedoms with this and do whatever you want with the marinade. Just remember, to have an effective marinade, you need a couple of things. Acid, thyme, and or pressure. In my case, acid's gonna be the orange and lemon juice as well as the ponzu. Thyme is gonna be overnight. Pressure could be a vacuum seal if you have one. We're just gonna let this sit overnight with some acid that I already had prepped out, but I'm gonna show you the marinade that I made so you guys can make this at home. One orange. We're gonna throw in a half a lemon as well. This is about a quarter of a fresh onion. This can be pureed or diced up. For this, I'm going to dice it and let it just get the essence of that onion. You're gonna to wanna to get this off of the chicken before you dredge it though. I'm also gonna put in a fresh clove of garlic. Do not smash your garlic. If you smash the garlic to open it up, you end up using all of those beautiful oils going straight into your cutting board rather than into your food. The next part of this marinade is actually gonna be some ponzu. You can probably find this at any local store. You can make it yourself. I choose just to use this. We're just gonna hit this until it starts covering the chicken up. That's good. Remember, we don't measure at Totski. A little bit of black pepper and a little bit of Himalayan salt. Hit it with some sesame oil because why not? That's your marinade. Now make sure with your marinades that you actually do get full coatage on all of your chicken. So that way when it sits, it's fully covered and fully submerged in your liquid. There's your chicken in the marinade. We're gonna place this in the fridge overnight and I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now. This is the marinade that I made last night. Now it looks a little bit different because I did take all of those ingredients and I threw it in a blender. I chose to do that because of the amount of chicken that I had and it does release different flavors. So you can do that or you can keep them chopped just the way we did. It's gonna be just as delicious. I'm gonna let this sit out for just a little bit so all of those oils kind of start to melt again so that way we're not dealing with too much of the marinade. Now Soma and crew did have a little bit of a salad thing going on but I thought that was I actually really like coleslaws. We're gonna make our own style of a coleslaw for this wrap and I think it's gonna be so delicious and so complimentary and a lot easier to eat than the lettuce hanging out the top. For this coleslaw I'm gonna use about a half a head of cabbage. This has been sitting around for a bit I need to use it up and I'll show you something you can do with cabbage. Cabbage is an interesting vegetable because even even though it starts to oxidize on the outside, once you cut it, there's still fresh cabbage on the inside. So this, definitely not bad. We're just gonna end up throwing away that piece, that piece, that one, and that one. Now you still have all of this usable cabbage. Now for this, I do want it to be as thin as possible for this coleslaw. So it does become super tender and really easy to eat. So I'm gonna try to shave this as close as I can to being a nice thin slaw. That seems like it'll be good enough. It's nice and thin now. We're gonna go ahead and throw this in our bowl and finish cutting the rest of that coleslaw. I absolutely love green onion in my coleslaw. You can choose to omit this, you can choose to add it, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure you make it how you wanna make it. Now we have our cabbage, we have our green onion, we're gonna throw in some cucumber. This is a hothouse cucumber, absolutely love using these. They're really, really nice, incredibly dense, and I absolutely love using these for coleslaws. The only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna de-seed these guys. You could cut that in half and use a spoon to remove the seeds, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fillet these. Now with those de-seeded, I'm gonna get these fairly thin as well, so that way they don't interfere with the texture of the chicken. 
there are our beautiful cucumbers. One last thing we're gonna add is a little bit of fresh cilantro. Now, if you don't enjoy cilantro, you can always throw in some parsley or just omit it completely. I love the flavor of this. I think it's gonna go nicely with everything else. After you give your cilantro a fairly good rinse to get any grime or dirt off of it, just give it a nice dry so it's not so difficult to cut. So we're all gonna need, we're gonna chop up all of this cilantro, but we're only gonna use half of it for this and half of it for the pancake. All right, that looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and add this to our coleslaw. We're gonna throw the rest of it in this little guy. Now that we have most of our ingredients chopped up for our coleslaw, we're just gonna go ahead and dress it just a little bit and finish it off. This is gonna be a very clean dressing, salt, pepper, vinegar, and oil. We're gonna be using rice vinegar for this. I feel like it has a very nice flavor to it with a little bit of sweetness. We want enough to really cover everything so it has a nice gloss to it. So I'll show you what that looks like. Gonna hit it with a little bit of sesame oil as well. This gives it a really nice toasted flavor. Mix everything really, really nicely because all of that liquid is gonna to go to the bottom. You wanna pull the bottom up. This is gonna allow all those flavors to mingle. And just make sure you do give everything a taste because once it's done, this is done. Oh yeah, that's good. Now that our coleslaw is done, we'll set it to the side and get this ready to finish later. Now the next thing is a shortcut. You know what, Yukihita always takes shortcuts and I'm gonna do the same thing. For our pancake, we are going to actually be using this Kodiak pancake mix. I had this laying around last night while I was testing this recipe and I have to say, it actually came out really, really nicely. If you wanna go the full route, you can go ahead and mix up a couple of eggs, a little bit of flour, baking soda, water, whatever the case is, find an easy waffle recipe instead of using this, but I really like the flavor of this. So, shortcuts. This pancake recipe is incredibly easy, but we're actually gonna be following their waffle recipe on the back, which I had made last night. We're gonna need two cups of pancake mix. Just hear me out, it's gonna be delicious. You know, we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with one and a half. I don't think we need that many. We're also gonna need one and a half tablespoons of canola oil. I'm gonna throw in one egg for a little bit of added fat. Then we're also gonna need, then we're also gonna need one cup of water. I also have a little bit of whole milk that I may add to this, depending on the consistency that I have so far. So this consistency, this is pancake batter. We do not want this. This is too thick. We want them to be thin, thin like little crepe, thin crepey pancakes. We're gonna need milk. That looks good. So this is still a little thick. We want it to be just a bit thinner than what we have here. I'm gonna hit with just a touch more milk. What I'm going for is almost a crepe batter rather than a pancake batter. They are fairly runny, so you want it to almost not stream together when you pick it up. And you can see this stream. That is still together too much. So I'm gonna add it just a little bit more milk to this. There we go, it's starting to break up towards the end. That's kind of what we're looking for, but we're gonna fire one off. We're gonna see how this reacts in our pan. I don't actually have a rounded nonstick pan, but I do have my Japanese style omelet pan for when you would make tamago. We're gonna go ahead and use this. It'll make us a nice square pancake crepe thing. And it's gonna be delicious. I did this last night, just trust me on this. So this feels like it's getting relatively hot. I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of pan spray just for a little bit of help. Grab yourself a ladle and take just a small amount of this. This again, still feels fairly thick, but I wanna see how it reacts. Once you have enough in your pan, you actually do wanna spread this all over the pan to make sure it is very, very thin all the way through and doesn't create a ton of air and a ton of thickness in the middle. Now we're gonna hit this thing with a little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh pepper, some granulated garlic, and finally, a touch of cilantro. Now again, I want you guys to experiment with this stuff. Don't make it exactly like I'm doing. If you want to, throw some cheddar cheese on top of this and then flip it over. It's gonna give you a nice cheesy crust. I'm gonna keep it like this because we're gonna have a ton of fat later with all of everything that's going in it. I think it's gonna be so good, but make your own, play with your food. Once you can lift up the edges without it folding or without it curling, it, you know that it's ready to flip. So we're just gonna give this guy a quick flip. There it is, look at that. We're gonna press it just gently not too much heat at this point. You don't want it to burn the cilantro on the other side because this batter is mostly cooked now. These don't take very long to cook. You have a nice crispiness from that egg and from all the added fat. I'm just giving this about 30 seconds on the other side and I want to see what it looks like. We're going to go ahead and kill the heat. There it is. There is our crepey pancake delicious. Now I do want to taste this because it looks amazing. The other key thing that you want to be able to do is actually fold this over. So if you cook this too long, it's going to end up cracking when you fold it. So we have this really nice consistency all the way throughout. I think this batter is going to be perfect. Let's give it a shot. A touch more salt, touch more pepper, a little more garlic, a little more seasoning all the way through, but otherwise it's really, really nice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. To make things easy, I'm going to go ahead and incorporate 
my seasoning right into my batter right now. This way, I don't have to deal with it later. Now, if you're making quite a few of these, make them ahead of time. I'm gonna go ahead and make all of my batter right now, set them to the side, and they'll be totally fine for the next hour or so while I'm getting everything else ready so I can take it over to my wife for lunch. While we're finishing off our pancakes, I do wanna take the time to say thank you to everyone out there who's encouraged me to make videos just like this. We're almost at a thousand subscribers and that's just kind of mind blowing to me at this point. Your support makes me want to continue doing things like this. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. I look forward to playing with my food and I hope you look forward to making it at home. Let's make some pancakes. Look at that, one shot. Bam, oh, oh God, that one, no, oh, that didn't work. For the sauce, I do want something extra creamy for this because we do have all the vinegars in this coleslaw. We have the crunchiness coming from the chicken that's gonna be coming up. We need something with just a little bit of creaminess to it. Honestly, spicy mayo. Almost every izakaya I've ever been to offers a little bit of spicy mayo as well as ponzu for their karage. But spicy mayo, so good. Now the spicy mayo, this is going to save us some time. I have some avocado oil mayo that we had purchased. You're gonna need about that much. That, okay. About that much. I'm gonna hit this spicy mayo with about a half a lemon. These lemons are massive, but it's fine. Just a little bit of acid in there. If Gordon Ramsay could make spicy mayo for his 10 million subscribers, we are okay with making spicy mayo. A little bit of salt. That's, that's a lot, that's a lot of salt. We're gonna take some of that salt out. Black pepper. For this spicy mayo, I'm gonna use some of these Trinidad habanero chili pepper stuff that a friend of ours has sent me. I've never tried these before. May as well try them today. <coughs> okay, that's that's gonna be spicy. Let's uh, let's get a different spoon for this. Just do a little, just a little, just a little bit of love. Just a little to start. I'm also gonna throw in a little bit more garlic into this. I, I love garlic in my spicy mayo, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now we gotta give it a taste. Mm, yeah, that's good stuff. We're actually gonna, gonna bring this up a little bit. Final phase, the breading. For this, you're gonna need yourself another bowl. And we're gonna use two things, potato starch and AP flour. We're gonna go with a three to one ratio of AP flour to potato starch. So I have, I have one and a half cups of AP flour in here. We're gonna add a half a cup of potato starch. Now remember, this doesn't come seasoned. Season your flour. Salt, pepper, garlic, chili powder. Give that a good forking. Now we have our breading, we're gonna start releasing the chicken. You're also gonna need somewhere to land with the chicken once it's fried. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a second pan, line it with paper towel. That way once we fry the chicken, we can actually go straight into the pan next to the fryer. Let us double check our oil. Remember, wet hand, dry hand. Shake off any excess flour. You don't want all of that in your fryer. So our oil seems like it's dropping in temp a little bit from adding that piece of chicken, which will happen. So we're just gonna turn the heat on and hopefully wearing a tank top wasn't a bad idea. It's getting really, really nice already. I'm gonna bring this to just before it gets golden brown. I'm gonna show you guys what that is. All right guys, we're gonna fry up a lot of this at one time after we dredge a lot of it. That's how far we're gonna take it right now. We're gonna actually double fry these. So we're gonna set these off to the side once they have a nice color. Let's dredge all this, do it in one shot, fry a bunch of it, and repeat the process. While those are resting, we're gonna fry up our second batch right away so the oil stays at that right temperature. Now that we have all of our chicken fried up, we're gonna go ahead and do the twice fry. This will make them extra crispy and relieve us from any extra moisture in the batter. Then we can finally assemble our karage sandwich. While that chicken is finishing up, let's start our sandwich. I'm gonna pick the most beautiful side. I think that this side is way more golden. We're gonna go with this side as the inside. Now to start off with the karage sandwich, always sauce first. And remember, we're gonna go ahead and fold this like that into a cone. So you want it to be shaped exactly like this. Hit it with a little bit of sauce right on the center. Grab your coleslaw that we made earlier. Now it's nice and marinated. We have our twice fried karage have somewhere to land. Oh, it's so golden and beautiful now. Take your extra hot karage carefully. Oh, it's so crispy. Lay them on the inside. I think that's as much as we're gonna fit. We're gonna leave that guy out. A Little bit more sauce. It's definitely not the prettiest thing I've ever made, but how does it taste? PK's Sumir Mark Karage. Now we did add our own twist to this. I'm gonna take a big, big bite of this. I, I'm, let's see how this tastes. This is one of the best things I've ever made. 
I was so into this, I didn't realize it was dripping all over my apron. Well, fellow foodies, that's gonna be it for the Sumir Mark Karage Chef PK style. Remember, play with all the ingredients, make it how you wanna make it. My name is Chef PK, here on Chef Paul Makes. Get subscribed, keep playing with your food, and I'll see you in the next one. Eat all this and then make lunch for the wife. Hopefully the oil's still good, it looks a little dark now. That's fine. Uh.